Okay, so today we're diving into something really kind of cool, how we're now basically like teaching our bodies to fight cancer better. And it's uh, it's with this thing called anti-PD-1 therapy. You familiar with that at all? Oh, absolutely, yeah. This is a super fascinating area of cancer treatment, you know, because we're moving away from those, those like kind of harsh old school approaches, you know, like chemotherapy, which let's face it, can really do a number on the body. So with immunotherapy and specifically this anti-PD-1 therapy we're talking about, we're basically like, you know, giving a boost to the body's own like internal defense system, you know. Yeah. It's all about the immune system getting it fired up to tackle the cancer head on. Right, right. And the source we're uh, looking at this time is this article from Assay Genie. And I got to say, they really get into the nitty gritty, the science of it all. So mm -hmm. we're going to unpack this together, you know, break it down. Maybe maybe to start, can you kind of like set the scene for us? You know, what's the, what's the fundamental problem that this anti-PD-1 therapy is even trying to fix? Okay, so imagine this, right? Your immune system, it's like it's like a, a really well-trained security team, always on patrol, you know, constantly scanning for anything suspicious. And the T cells, those are those are like the elite forces, the special ops of your immune system. They can spot and eliminate anything harmful, you know, viruses, bacteria, even those wonky cells that can turn into cancer. But here's the thing about cancer cells they're sneaky they've they've evolved these like crazy ways to avoid detection it's almost like they've figured out how to like put on a disguise you know make themselves invisible to the immune system so it's no wonder cancer can be such a tough nut to crack you know what i mean so it's like we've got all these security guards ready to work but they're they're being totally duped by these these master criminals exactly exactly and you know one of the ways these cancer cells pull off this this disappearing act is through this mechanism. It's called the PD-1, PD, L1 pathway. Think of it like this, okay? When a T cell, you know, one of those elite guards, bumps into another cell in the body, it's got to figure out, hey, are you a friend or are you a foe? And they do this through like this little molecular handshake, you know? The T cell has this protein on its surface, it's called PD-1, and a lot of healthy cells, they have this partner protein, PD-L1. So when these two proteins, you know, they kind of link up, it's like a signal to the T cell that everything's cool, like move along. On, nothing to see here. So it's like a checkpoint in this PDL one. It's flashing the green light, the all clear signal. Yes, precisely. But, and this is where it gets really interesting, cancer cells, those sneaky devils, they've learned how to exploit this whole system, right? They they start expressing these really high levels of PDL one on their surface. So it's like they're they're waving this don't hurt me flag, even though they're like the opposite of harmless. And the T cells, while well, they're getting this false all clear signal, so they back off and the cancer cells, well, they just multiply like crazy, completely unchecked. Wow. So they're they're basically manipulating this system mm -hmm. using the body's own defenses against it. That's that's wild. And this is where the anti PD one therapy steps in. Right. Like yeah. it's coming in to change the rules of the game. You got it. That's exactly what it's doing. Anti-PD-1 therapy, it's like throwing a wrench in the gears of that deceptive handshake we were talking about, you know. It basically blocks either the PD-1 receptor on the T-cell or that sneaky PD-L1 on the cancer cell. It stops them from linking up, from giving that false all clear. So by, you know, by messing with that interaction, we're cutting the brakes on the immune system. We're letting those vigilant T-cells, those special forces, finally see the cancer for what it really is a threat. And then they can get to work doing what they do best, eliminating it. Okay, I think I'm starting to get the picture here. Mm -hmm. But why is this? Why is this such a big deal? What makes this approach so much better than, say, just hitting the body with chemo? Ah, that's the million dollar question, right? And and there are a couple of really big reasons why this is so groundbreaking. First off, because you know this anti PD one therapy. It's all about boosting the body's natural defenses, right? It tends to be a lot more targeted than than traditional chemo. Chemo's kind of like, you know, carpet bombing and attacks everything, even healthy cells just trying to do their job. But with this therapy, we're talking fewer side effects for a lot of patients, which is huge. And second, and this is this is where it gets really interesting, when you like unleash the immune system in this particular way, you're not just going after those immediate tumor cells, the ones you can see, right? You're also like you're potentially training the immune system to remember those cancer cells in the long run. So if they even think about staging a comeback down the road, the immune system is like, nope, remember us, not this time. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like giving the immune system this this photographic memory, right? It's great. I'm always that's amazing. So so we're not just like shrinking tumors here. We're we're trying to stop the cancer from ever coming back. Are we I mean, are we talking about a cure at this point? Well, it's it's definitely a, a huge leap forward. And for some patients, yeah, it's been it's been life changing. 
changing for sure. You know, the article, the one we're looking at, it specifically talks about melanoma and how it's shown a, a really remarkable response to this anti PD-1 therapy. Oh, okay. Why why melanoma specifically? What's what's different about it? So one of the key things is this thing called, get this, tumor mutation burden. Basically, it's it's all about how many mutations are happening within a tumor's DNA. So melanoma, you know, often caused by too much sun, it, it usually has a really high mutation burden, meaning it's cells, they've got all these these genetic typos, you know, and those errors, they're like they're like giant red flags for the immune system. Makes it way easier for those those reactivated T cells to zero in and be like, all right, you're out of here. So the more like the more messed up a cancer cell's DNA is, the more vulnerable it is to this type of therapy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's the general idea, of course. You know, it's it's always more complicated than that in real life, right? And and not everyone with melanoma is going to respond to this the same way. But it it does highlight this really important point that the more we learn about like the genetics of different cancers and how they interact with the immune system, the better we can tailor these therapies. It's like we can start creating treatments that are custom made for each patient and their own like unique tumor profile. Wow. So we're we're talking truly personalized medicine here. That's mm-hmm. that's incredible. But okay, I gotta ask, if we're like essentially taking the brakes off the immune system, are there are there any downsides? Like could it could it backfire? Right. Right. No, that's that's a really important question. And it's it's something we definitely got to consider. Remember how we were saying the immune system is like this, like the security force? Well, sometimes, you know, that force, it can it can get a little carried away. You know what I mean? It can get a little overzealous. And when that happens, you can see what we call immune related adverse events or like IRAEs for short. Hmm. Sounds kind of scary. I know. So so the immune system all amped up to fight cancer, it might accidentally like attack healthy cells too like it's taking its job a little too seriously yeah you got it exactly it's it's kind of like friendly fire unfortunately and these these IRAs they can be you know they can be pretty mild like a little rash or they can be more serious like uh, inflammation in the gut or even you know problems with organs like like the lungs or the liver okay so not not great how how common are these these side effects and and what can you even do about them so the good news is that that most of these IRAs they're manageable especially if you catch them early enough, doctors are like, they're getting way better at spotting the signs and treating them. And a lot of times, you know, you can manage the symptoms with meds like, like corticosteroids. But of course, any, any treatment decision, it's, it's always a risk benefit analysis, right? Weighing the potential good against the bad. And that's, that's a conversation to have with your doctor for sure to make an informed decision. Yeah, absolutely. Informed decision making is key. So we've got this this really powerful tool with anti PD one therapy, but it's you know it's not perfect. It's got its challenges. What are like what are researchers focusing on to try and like improve it, make it even better? Well, one really really promising area is is combination therapies. Imagine this, right? Instead of just like blocking that one PD one PDL one handshake, what if we could like target other pathways that cancer cells use to like to hide from the immune system at the same time, like hit them from all sides. That's that's the whole idea behind combination therapies, using multiple drugs to attack the cancer on like multiple fronts, you know, make it way harder for those sneaky cells to like to escape. OK, yeah, that that makes sense, like a multi pronged approach like you'd you'd have in any any kind of complex battle. Right. What what kind of like combinations are we talking about? What's what's being explored? So one example, and and they actually mentioned this in the article, is is combining this anti-PD-1 therapy with with another type of immunotherapy. This one targets a different uh, checkpoint protein. This one's called CTLA-4. It's it's like shutting down two escape routes for the for the cancer cells instead of just the one. Oh, okay, so it's like it's like a double whammy. And and what are the what are the results looking like with that? So far, the the early research is. It's pretty exciting. It's it's showing that some cancers are responding way better with the combo than with either therapy alone. But, you know, got to be real. Combining therapies, it, it could mean a higher risk of side effects, too. So it's it's all about finding that sweet spot, that balance between between really knocking out the cancer, but also keeping those side effects in check. Right. So like like a double edged sword in some ways. Yeah. In a way, I guess you could say that. But but that's. That's why all this research is so crucial, right? To to figure out the right combinations, figure out which patients will benefit most, and and ultimately make these treatments as safe and effective as we possibly can. And you know, it's not just about 
combining different immunotherapies either. There's there's some really cool research looking at at combining anti PD one therapy with some of the the more traditional treatments like like chemo, radiation, even those uh, those targeted therapies, the ones that like interfere with specific molecules that cancer cells need to grow. Wow, so many so many possibilities. The article it also mentioned something called uh, adoptive T cell therapy. What what is that all about? Adoptive T cell therapy, huh? That that almost sounds like like something out of a sci-fi movie. What what is that exactly? You know, it's it's actually a pretty elegant idea when you get down to it. Basically, we're we're taking the patient's own immune cells, right? And and we're we're like giving them a serious upgrade in the lab. So we we take out these T cells and we we engineer them, like reprogram them to go after specific targets on the cancer cells. You know, yeah. like giving them like a personalized hit list, and then. Then we infuse them back into the patient. So you're you're like creating this army of of super soldiers, training them to like take out this this specific enemy. Exactly, that's a great way to put it. And and the research on this, it's it's really something, especially for certain blood cancers. It's it's showing a lot of promise. That makes sense, right? Uh, it seems like it'd be easier for those those engineered T cells to like to reach their targets if they're you know already in the bloodstream. Yeah, you're you're totally right. But but there are also like clinical trials going on right now to to see how it works against solid tumors too, you know? And and this is this is where combining it with the with the anti PD1 therapy gets really really interesting cuz by, you know, by blocking those immune checkpoints, you're you're basically clearing a path for those those engineered T cells to get in there and do their thing. So it's like it's like combining the best of both worlds, like yeah. like boosting the immune system's like natural abilities, and then like giving it this this precision weapon at the same time. Exactly, exactly, and and it gets even wilder. There are even more like futuristic sounding things on the horizon, like like these things called bispecific antibodies. You familiar with those? Not really, no. So these things are they're fascinating. They're like they're like these. These tiny little bridges, you know, they can actually bind to the the PD one protein on the T cells and and a target on the cancer cell at the same time. Oh wow! So it's like it's like forcing those two cells to like to shake hands, right? Yeah. So the T cell can finally see the cancer cell for what it is. So exactly, like we're we're constantly coming up with new ways to like to outmaneuver these cancer cells, you know, stay one step ahead. But but even with all these all these incredible advancements. There are, you know, there are still challenges like like resistance, for example. Resistance, you mean like patients who who respond really well at first, but then like the treatment stops working. Exactly. Yeah, it's it's complicated and, and it can happen for a bunch of reasons. Like sometimes the, the cancer cells, they they adapt, they evolve. They they figure out how to survive without relying on that on that PD-1 pathway so much. And other times, you know, it, it might be that the, the patient's immune system itself, it just it gets worn out. You know, it can't it can't keep up the fight forever. Right. Like a like a war of attrition almost. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. But but the good news is that with every you know every challenge every setback we we learn something new right and and that's that's where this whole area of biomarker research comes I in i biomarkers mm -hmm. those are those are like those molecular clues that can tell us which which patients are going to respond to which therapies right exactly it, if we can like pinpoint those biomarkers then then we can start creating these these really personalized treatment plans right we can choose the therapies that are most likely to work for that for that specific patient based on you know based on their tumor their immune system the whole picture so it's it's really about using every every tool we have whether it's you know in the lab or in the clinic mm -hmm. to to try and like outsmart these cancer cells which let's face it they're they're pretty good at survival this is this is really incredible stuff when you think about it we're not like we're not just talking about shrinking tumors anymore we're we're talking about like rewriting how the immune system and cancer interact yeah absolutely it's it's pretty amazing right and and you know it it makes you wonder like if if our own immune systems can like can fight cancer like this what what else are they capable of what what if we could like harness that power for other diseases too you know like like autoimmune disorders or or even infections i mean it's it's a long shot but but researchers are they're looking into it that's that's incredible to think about like like we're we're just starting to understand what immunotherapy can really do every like every new discovery opens up these these whole new possibilities that's uh that's our deep dive on on anti pd1 therapy for this time I, I hope you found it as as fascinating as i did yeah me too it's uh it's a really exciting time to be working in this field that's for sure <laughs> who knows what the future holds you know exactly 
And and to everyone listening, if you if you want to like dive into the nitty gritty yourself, yeah, you know, check out that full article from Assy Genie. We'll uh, we'll put a link in the show notes for you. And uh, until next time, stay curious, everyone, and we'll uh, we'll catch you on our next deep dive.